this is how my first gaming setup looked and this is how my setup looks now but after spending thousands of dollars on setup upgrades over the years i've realized that some of the products were just a waste of money but on the other hand a lot of them are really good and effective for your setup so if i had to build a setup from scratch today these are the 10 products that i actually focus on i don't only use my setup for gaming but also for business and streaming too and without a good monitor you can experience this in high resolution low response time and high refresh rates simply put it's not fun when your screen looks like sh and that's why there's three monitor brands that I really recommend. Starting off with the budget option, Corey's monitors on Amazon. Now I have a bunch of them linked, but they have the best price monitors on the market. And I still use one in my setup today. They're also really solid for quality and stuff like that. I recommend this monitor right here and I'll have it linked in the description. Now let's talk about Asus. Now Asus has a lot of great panels and honestly, they are one of the best monitor brands I've ever used. I've used a bunch of their monitors from time to time and over the years, and I love every single one I've gotten. I have a 500 hertz 1080p panel. Now this one is reduced down to $600 now. And it's a great value. Asus just released a 1440p one that is way better, but it's a little bit more expensive if you want to buy that. They also have some good budget options as well, but these are higher quality and going to last you longer than the Corey ones. Now let's talk about my favorite brand of monitor so far that I've used, Samsung. Now I'm using a OLED 360 hertz monitor, and this is my favorite monitor I've ever used. It's 1440p, 360 hertz, and 0.03 milliseconds response time this monitor literally feels like you're playing in the game itself when you play on this monitor it is unbelievably clear and fast and responsive it does come with a hefty price tag around 800 ish dollars but it is one of the best monitors i've ever used my monitor is actually 27 inches and if you go down to the 24 inch one it's a little cheaper but for the quality that you're getting in this setup your main monitor should be your best one and this one you cannot go wrong with even the bezels on this are super small and it is very very solid too so if you want a smooth and immersive feeling while playing games, this Samsung monitor is by far my favorite. The upgrades I mentioned in this video will improve as I go on and will get more spontaneous. But for now, let's talk about microphones. I've had my fair share of microphones throughout the days. And honestly, there's a lot of bad advice out there. Well, what people don't realize is how impactful a good microphone can be, especially if you're a content creator or own a business like me. And here's why you should use the mics that I'm about to recommend, especially while you're gaming. If you want to give a good comm to your teammate and they can't hear you clearly, then it might just mess up your whole gaming experience that's exactly why you should check out the recommendations that i'm about to give the main one that i've actually been using recently that's good for the price is the road pod mic and honestly i can't stop using this i broke my sure sm7b a few months back when i was building my setup and ever since then i swapped to this mic and this mic is only 100 bucks and it's really really good and you're listening to it right now now they do have a usb version of this for a little bit more and it's not necessarily the best budget option but there are a few other ones that i'm going to list in here a second that are budget option of this too but the road pod mic is by far my favorite the best budget mic from fifine is this xlr slash usb dynamic microphone one it's right here on amazon and i'll link it in the description but this is a very good start because basically this mic has a usb capability and an xlr capability for only 54 bucks now let's talk about the third item on this list keyboards let's start off by size now a lot of people say size doesn't matter but in this case it does let me go through all of the different sizes first 60 percent 65 percent 75 percent 80 percent and 100 percent these are going to be the main ones you want to know let's start off with 60 percent. now if you're a gamer and you actively play games all the time and that's like your main use for your setup go with the 60 or a 65 percent i personally recommend for gaming the wooting 60 he which is by far the fastest gaming keyboard in the entire world and it gives you an actual competitive advantage optium tech makes a bunch of great videos on this check them out personally i found the sweet spot to be 75 percent keyboards because it gives you a great balance between productivity and gaming but personally i just switched the keyboards out but if you want to buy one good keyboard there's a few i'll recommend the 75 percent that i recommend is actually the epo maker th80 for a budget option because you can buy a bare bones kit and buy switches put it in yourself and customize it on your own with a really solid kit and it also also sounds really good if you put good switches in it obviously if you're looking for a solid 65 percent the al66 on amazon by yunzi is a really good choice too it's just a little bit pricier than the th80 but this keyboard is really high quality and i'm not going to mention all the keyboards that i recommend but i'll definitely leave a full link of a bunch of them in the description that you can read on and check out if you found any of that helpful make sure to leave a like and subscribe too now moving on to switches now switches are important to have the look and feel of your keyboard be exactly perfect and there's a 
few things you need to know. First, there's two types of keyboard switches, and there's obviously many more, but these are the main two that you need to understand. Linear and tactile. Linear is very smooth. It just feels really nice to type on, kind of like you're typing on a cloud. Tactile, on the other hand, kind of feels like you're pressing on bugs. They're like super crunchy, tactile clicky. It's like that one annoying girl in the office. That's... <laughs> You know, that's the exact sound of a clicky keyboard. Personally, I'm a big fan of linears because I like how they sound. Moving on from the switch type though, we need to understand what the switches do. When you press down, there's a force called actuation force. All these different switches have different types of actuation forces that allow you to complete the press. An example, on the wooden keyboard, you can adjust this and that's why you can play super fast games and the inputs are faster than any other keyboard is because you can adjust this actuation force. But if you're just building a keyboard outright, you don't have this ability so you have to look up what sounds good and what feels good to you but i recommend starting off with a 40 gram linear if you're going linear and tactile it doesn't really matter that much because you're gonna have the bump regardless but for linears it does matter a lot so i would recommend going off a of sound and maybe off of other people's opinions my personal favorite is an ink black switch and they sound incredible Overall, those are the main components of your keyboard that you need to understand. And as you're going to buy them, I'm sure you'll learn more. We're on to four now, which is mice. And if you guys didn't know, I run the number one mousepad company in the world. Yes, you should go buy one because we just added a mousepad customizer that no one else is doing right now. But besides the point, there are a couple mice options that I really recommend because you guys want the best experience while gaming. My favorite three mice right now are the Ninjaroso Sora V2, the Final Mouse ULX and Small, and the Pulsar X2 Mini. Now, these three mice have a very solid price point. Now the Pulsar X2 Mini is the best budget option out of the three because it is cheaper than both of the other mice. If you want to go a little bit more money into the Pulsar X2 Mini, you can actually go on their website and they have a full customizer of mice, which is kind of cool. You can customize your entire mouse. The Pulsar X2 Mini is a solid price to performance budget mouse that is just really solid all around. Now, personally, I have small hands. So gripping a mouse, it's just very difficult for me to have big mice like the G Pro Super Light or things like that. And the Pulsar X2 Mini was my daily driver for the longest time until I found the Ninjaroso Sora V2. And this one is $100, but they actually sent it out to me for free and I wasn't expecting much. I didn't know anything about their brand at all, but I was very pleasantly surprised. This mouse's shape is by far my favorite shape on any mouse I've ever used. Shape really matters and there's a lot of different factors that go into that. But the Ninjaroso Sora V2 is by far my favorite mouse grip wise. You kind of use it more in a palm grip. It literally just is so fun to use because it feels lightweight. It's got 4K pulling rate and a bunch of great features that go alongside it. But my favorite daily driver right now has been the Final Mouse ULX. And the reason why I put the other two on this list is because the ULX is hard to get right now. It's sold out so many times with different creators and stuff like that. And that's how Final Mouse's mice are. But if you can get your hands on one of these, I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. It is one of the lightest mice I've ever used in my entire life. And it feels literally like nothing in my hand. It's just light as hell. I just dropped it. That's how light it is. From clicks to the scroll wheel to the side buttons, they all feel firm and there's no creaking and it just feels awesome to use and hold and i've seen very mixed opinions on this but personally my experience with it i've had zero issues with mine now they do have a medium small and large and mine is in the small but i did originally start with the medium just to get my hands on it and the medium is good too but it's especially important to get a good mouse because of many factors your aim improves your comfortability and on top of that you want to get good posture especially while gaming so you don't get carpet tunnel or anything like that these are the best options in total and you of course can't have a good setup without a good mouse pad. I'm not going to keep this long, but if you want the highest quality, authentically made, and aesthetic looking mouse pads, just go copy from gutsyaden.com. It's literally a no brainer. And I get comments asking me where I buy my mouse pads from, which I think is kind of funny, but I've literally designed all of them and I just really enjoy making your setup better. And there are honestly three types of mouse pads you should look for, which is cloth mouse pads, glass mouse pads, which are an actual glass pane, and it causes for insane glide, which we even created one for ourselves, and it is pretty insane. I wouldn't recommend this for beginners. Beginners. This is definitely like an advanced thing. If you're really into aiming, you should try out a glass mouse pad. Onto the last one, which everyone seems to glaze a lot, is Artisan. Now, Artisan is a great pad, don't get me wrong, but to get them to the US and everything and pay, it's kind of expensive. And a lot of people don't understand this that there's a lot of other brands and companies out there that make similar quality to the Artisan for a lot less, including our site. We actually made a Proline V1 and it sold out 
pretty quick. But we're working on a V2 for next year, so I'll keep you guys posted. But yeah, you guys can check out all different paths that I've mentioned. I'll leave them all in the description. Next, we have the missing link between great audio and your audience. Whether you're streaming, recording a video, or just talking to friends, an audio interface makes sure that you have all of that. Without it, you can experience some fuzzing, distortion, and some other problems like that from just basic USB mics. Now, the best budget interface, hands down, is the Fifine one. This one is extremely cheap, and it's been blowing up on TikTok everywhere because everyone's buying it. And honestly, it's pretty good for the price, I can't lie. The Behringer UM22 is also a really solid option for the price, and I started out on that one before I had what I have now. This one is by far the best interface that I've used, and it doesn't have all the software features that you probably want. It does have a good experience using a XLR mic for the first time. It's probably a good start, but if you want something more sleek and simple, the Behringer UM22 is probably the best one you can buy for the price. A step up from that, if you want to go all out, there's two options that you can maybe buy. One is the Go XLR. Now that one is really recommended by so many people, but the problem is a lot of the devs don't work on it anymore, and I don't think it's going to become a viable option anymore. So a lot of streamers have actually moved over to the Rodecaster Duo by Rode, and this is the one that I personally use. It has sound pads in the right, dials on everything, how to change, you know, all the sliders and everything like that, and you can change everything in real time. And on top of that, you can connect other wireless mics to it. It's very expensive though compared to the other options, but if you want something top of the line, Rodecaster Duo, and I'll have it linked in the description too. If you want your setup to look better and improve desk ergonomics while not spending that much money, monitor arms are a sleeper. Right now, you actually might be straining your neck, affecting the aesthetic of your setup and the space you have to play games. And this is why I recommend these two options. If you're desk mounting, I recommend the Vivo desk monitor arm mount. It's 30 bucks on Amazon and they have a couple different versions in black or white, but I've used this in countless setup builds and every single time it never fails me. If you're looking to wall mount though, I actually use these $12 ones and I use them on all my monitors. It does not matter the size. As long as you mount it into the stud in your wall, it does not matter how heavy the monitor is. The mount should work perfectly fine. And I did this in my new setup build and I actually love wall mounting. It makes the setup look insanely clean, especially since you can hide your cables either behind it to the wall or you can just put a raceway down the wall and you hide it completely. I know I've talked about a lot of tools related to audio this video, but my favorite has to be the selection of your headphones. A lot of people don't understand the difference between a headset and headphones, but I'll give you some facts about both and you can pick your own. Now, let's start off with the things that suck about headsets at least. Headsets usually lower down the quality of the actual audio in game because companies try to focus the best balance of a good microphone and good quality of headphone. So you might not get the best sound quality in some headsets and get decent mic quality and vice versa. So if you are already choosing a mic and an audio interface, I recommend to go with headphones. And there's a few that I recommend. Like the headset I'm wearing right now. This is the HD58Xs, the Jubilee Edition, and by Sennheiser. Now, Sennheiser makes some of the best headsets ever. These are the most comfortable, lightweight, and they're open back, which means that you can kind of hear the surrounding and yourself talking. It makes it better than just being super enclosed. But if you don't like that, I actually have another one that you can buy as well. Audio-Technica M50Xs. Now, these are my favorite headset I've used Ever. And the cool thing about this is you can get different ear cups and things like that to make it more comfortable. And these aren't open back, so they're going to be a little bit closer to your head. But overall, they have a great sound quality for the price. Now, if you're looking for more of a gamery headset that has a mic and you don't want to do any of the other mic recommendations in this video, and you just want to have a headset that works with a mic, now I recommend a few. It's a little bit pricey, but the Black Shark V2 by Razer actually got good. And I feel like a lot of people hate on Razer just because of their old products, but their new stuff that they're coming out with is pretty good now another honorable mention about a good headset is the HyperX cloud twos i know a lot of people shit on them but i think they're actually pretty good and i've used them as my main daily driver before and i genuinely like them the core in a setup is the finishing touches that bring the whole setup to life even though we have more than one upgrade in this section of the video it's very important that you balance all the things i talk about and you honestly can't have a good setup without aesthetics in my opinion so maxing this part of your setup is almost as important as everything else i talked about in this video and here Here's how you can do it with some of the items that I'm about to talk about. First up, let's talk about decor around the room. Now, as you can see, I have a pretty decorated setup, but here's like the main thing you could do to upgrade it. So these right here are disc plates. Now, disc plates are a little bit pricey, but they're actually really cool because they have thousands of metal posters that you can hang up in your room. And once you hang one up, as long as you have the same magnet on the back, you can swap it out with a brand new one anytime. So like these up here, if I wanted to get a different one or a different style, I could just pull it off and bam, I put on a new 
one and guess what i have a brand new upgraded display a different look whatever even a new season if you have multiple different ones and you want to theme your setup that works too so display is a great solid option but what if you don't want to spend that much money well you can do a few things posters are really good especially if you have a theme to your setup like say you have a joker theme setup you'd want to have joker inspired things like funko pops posters collectibles from the joker movies or things like that to add to the room to just give that extra level of personality that of things that you like on top of that i like displaying a lot of tech i have a wall back here and i've displayed a lot of my favorite tech items through the years on this wall a way you can do it is buying shelves and putting them above your setup to the side of your setup and displaying some of the tech or things that you like in your room is very important too and the last thing i'll talk about in this section is very very important lighting when i built my dream bedroom video i put lighting on the wall behind my dresser and in different spots around the room to add just enough lighting to make the room a vibe at night now you don't have to go this all out you can add just a little bit of leds by govi which is my favorite recommendation of all time i love govi products every single light you see in my setup is a govi product these lights down here govi flow bars these lights up here govi uh desk lights this light up here is the govi ic light all of these lights can be controlled in the app and you can control them off your phone govi also has some other products where you can put lighting behind your monitors and that's actually my next upgrade it's very important that you have good cable management behind your monitors if you do this because if you don't then you're just gonna have shadows of all your cables on the wall just fair warning knowing you clicked on this video you're probably sitting at your setup for an unhealthy amount of hours per day and without a good chair you're just ruining your posture over the years i've had a bunch of bad chairs and it hurt my back over time until i got this chair i'm sitting in right now the mavix m9 now i got sent this chair to do a video on for tiktok for free and i didn't really have any opinions on it until i actually built it and sat in it myself the moment i sat in this chair i wanted to work with them indefinitely and promote them all the time now this chair is a thousand dollars and you don't have to spend that much money but if you do your back and your butt will thank you now i'm not even sponsored to say any of this in this video and they're not the sponsor of this video but they have a code that they've given me multiple times and i use it all the time since i'm part of the mavix mob and you guys should check it out in the link in the description they have all kinds of different colors and different budget options that you can choose on their site the m5 i actually built for my sister and her setup and she loves that chair and if you're not in the market for anything mavix trust me you can go look at other places like staples costco things like that and try to find a comfortable chair for a good price subscribe if you found this video useful and leave a like if you enjoyed it if you want to see how i built my dream thirty thousand dollar gaming setup with all the upgrades i'm talking about in this video click right here peace